Welcome to the Savvy Entrepreneur Show. If you're an entrepreneur or a small business person, or you're thinking about becoming one, this show is just for you. I'm Doris Nagel, your host for the next hour. I'm a crazy entrepreneur myself, and I love helping other entrepreneurs. I've counseled lots of startups over the past 30 years, and I've also helped start or started at least nine different businesses. I have seen so many mistakes, and more than that, I've made a lot of them. The show has two goals. First, to share helpful information and resources to I can help just one of you not make some of the mistakes that I've seen or that I've made myself, then I'm a success. Second, the show is intended to inspire, make your journey as an entrepreneur faster and easier and maybe just a little bit more fun. I don't know about you, but I found being an entrepreneur often is lonely. It's discouraging sometimes, confusing. Sometimes you have no idea if you're on the right track or not. And sometimes it's helpful to hear from others who have been along the same path that you're on. To help with both those goals, I have guests on the show every week who are willing to share their stories and advice. And my guest this week is Jamie Blythe Martin. She is a performing artist. She's a performing musician, and she also does voiceover, although it wouldn't surprise me if she does other things as well. She's going to share a little bit about her journey as an entrepreneur, how she got started, and you know some of the challenges and some of the fun stuff along the way. So, Jamie, thanks so much for being with me this week. Welcome to the Savvy Entrepreneur. Hi, Doris. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you having a platform like this for other entrepreneurs, especially females, to um, share in our joys and our struggles and um, hopefully help each other along the way. I think it's it's great to have a team and what you what you aptly said, kind of a lonely world sometimes. It really is. You and I were sharing before the show that I started out as a performing artist. Uh, I was in piano performance. Now you want to talk about a lonely, (laughs) a lonely venture when your piano teacher in college tells you, you need to lock yourself in a practice room and practice for six hours. (sighs) Yeah, that's, but you know, for any performance artist, there's a lot of time perfecting your craft, right? Yeah, for sure. Especially in the, yeah. I mean, wow. That sounds like not a fun college experience. (laughs) Well, it explains why I bailed out as as a piano performance major my sophomore. By my sophomore year, I decided that there was way more fun stuff to do, like boys and going out to the bars and all the other stuff that college has to offer. So I I still love music, but uh, wow. But not that much. (laughs) I have enormous respect for people who are performing, uh, especially classical musicians. Wow, tough road. Anyhow, before we get way into the weeds here, I want you to tell people, first of all, a little bit about your company, Blythe Martin Productions, and what you do. Okay, great. Well, just to touch back at what you were saying, just just to segue back. You know, I went to, I got offered a music scholarship in college, but you know what? Maybe this is the wrong thing to say, but I noticed a lot of people who majored in music were not really performing. Like some of them were teachers, but I never wanted to be a teacher. I always wanted to be a performer. I I was already performing. I was performing professionally as an actor on camera and in the community theater, but like I was making money all through middle school, high school, and college. By the time I graduated college, I was performing as a singer-songwriter, and I, I didn't opt to major in music, even though I loved music and acting, I still didn't major in music or acting. I was already doing that. Well, we're we're gonna have to go back and talk about that because that's (laughs) a pretty not interesting. (laughs) That's a pretty unusual and interesting fact. But back to just the question about your company and and what you do to help people understand kind of, you know, who you are and and uh, how you spend your day. Well, I just had a nice lunch with my husband in Geneva before we came here. We dropped our four-year-old off at preschool. Um, Blythe Martin Productions is it's kind of just me, so it, it kind of is kind of it's not like we have a lot of other people that we my husband does help people in our business. So basically it's a husband and wife duo. I'm the CEO, he's a CFO. His name's Eric. He is my partner in crime, he's my secret weapon. And um 
he's the tech and I'm the talent. So he knows how to do everything audio. He plays, he、um, mixes my albums. He does my voiceover studio. Wow. He can do all the computer stuff. He can do all the hard things. He does all the taxes. He does all the paperwork. And I'm just the one who gets to have fun. And I, be, like, you know what? I, I realized, <laughs> Jamie, what I've realized listening to you explain it that way is I need an Eric for my radio show. So if, <laughs> if there's any of you Erics out there, why you just email me after the show? I don't like, I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to marry you, but it sure sounds like. It's so funny. So many of my girlfriends and perform my friends who are performers, they all say that same thing. I need an Eric. If only I had an Eric, Jamie. You know, you're successful because you have an Eric. Right. It definitely helps to have a teammate who believes in you and backs you. On the other hand, though, I'm pretty brave. I'm the main breadwinner. I mean,、yeah. come on. If it wasn't for him, I couldn't do what I do. But if it wasn't for me, he couldn't do what he does. So I think the thing is finding a teammate whose interests complement each other and、yeah. whose skills complement each other. Because without a talent, a sound recording engineer doesn't do anything. And, and someone with a, a voice who wants to share something who doesn't know how to record her music, she can't do anything. So I think it's just more about teaming up and finding a great match rather、yeah. than who's, who's the. Who's better, or who you know, who's more valuable? We're both valuable. We're all valuable, and I think when you find a great team, stick with it. That's an that's an awesome, awesome thing. It's I interesting. Want I want to circle back a little bit later about、uh, business partners because that can often be a source of frustration, disappointment. Ooh, yeah, just imagine、feelings. if you're married to them and you can't escape them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've alluded to being the breadwinner. So how do you win the bread for your family? I'm you a hustler.、Do? I my eye is always on the prize. I'm a really hard worker. So it's all kind of on. I mean, I'm selling myself. Basically, I have two ways that I make money. I have I'm a voice actor, so I do voiceovers for、um, TV commercials, radio commercials, you know, corporate narration stuff like that. My background is in acting. I was an on camera and also on stage actress my whole life.、Um, you know, since age ten, I was doing it full time, and now I really love voiceover because I don't have to.、Um, it's much it's much shorter to do. I don't have to go anywhere or have many days for you know big productions. It's just like from my home studio. I can do it in an hour, a half hour on、right. the schedule. It's 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 convenient for me. And also, Eric, my husband Eric, got me into that because he was a sound、um, engineer and studio designer for a voiceover studio.、Um, and so he was like, "Oh, you should get into voiceover." And I'm like,、oh, "I don't know、yeah. much about that." So he kind of helped me with that. But so I do voiceover. That's one thing I do. And then also, I'm a A singer-songwriter is in my background. I did that in Austin when I was younger, but I'm a singer-songwriter now for、um, small children. So I have a music program for young kids. I think four years old is like my sweet spot, but anyone from like babies up to age eight would enjoy the show. But I have performances that I do.、Um, A lot of them. Pre-COVID, it was over 500 live shows a year. Doris, it was what? Crazy busy. Yes, yes. I'm a very big hustler. Like, I work my booty off.、Um, <laughs> and it's promotion, you know, and 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 just saying yes to every job at first. And now I'm, I'm lucky I have the luxury to say no to more or raise my rates to where they'll say no to me. <laughs>、ah. um, but yeah, I'm I'm a hustler. I'm, I'm a hard worker. But I made my living as a singer songwriter, even just right out of college. But it's just about having the talent. But more than having the talent, it's all about having the tenacity to make it happen, to book those jobs, to like go meet those bar owners or wherever you're doing your jobs, and be like. Hi, I want to do this. This is my thing. I have this. I can do duo. I can do solo. I can do trio. I can do band. What's your budget? It's just like I'm a salesperson, but I sell myself with my、um, with my singing, my music. Well,、show. you have given me a lot here to unpack, and、um, and I do want to because I think a lot of people are intrigued by、uh, the performing arts. I think for a couple reasons. One is is that there's a lot of people out there who. I mean, look at the, all the karaoke bars—the people who fancy themselves, you know, a a singer who's waiting to be discovered, or you know, watch all the people on America's Got Talent、mm-hmm. or or The Voice or whatever,、mm-hmm. um, and people who have dreamed about trying to make money from it. But I also think there's a certain amount of mystique. I mean, people enjoy the entertainment business and.、Um, Always kind of enjoy hearing a little bit about behind the scenes of how people got their start. So I'm absolutely flabbergasted 
that you were making money in junior high. Talk about that. I mean, yeah, how, I'm, a, I'm an you, actor. You how just did get all this agent. get started? I mean, <laughs> my mom's really hands on. Like, she's really supportive. You know, I did theater. I auditioned for my, you know, my community theater was very strong in New Braunfels, Texas, where I'm from. Shout out to Circle Arts Theater. I love you. Um, you know, I was in the Fantasy Factory, which is like a little acting school for young kids. And then I was in the Repertoire Theater. We toured. I was a little orphan Annie. I just got into theater and loved it. I was kind of a nerdy kid. Still am. <laughs> um, I wrote a lot of poems. I wrote a lot of stories. I didn't have a lot of friends. It's kind of weird. Um, so the theater people were definitely my people. And shout out to the karaoke people, too. I love those folks as well. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's true. Lots of people uh, have done that, but um, not very many of us make money doing it. Well, that's so the how difference did that between, happen? Yeah, well, you said you're waiting to be discovered, and that's the difference. I'm a working actor. I'm a working talent. I mean, I do have definitely have talent agents that help me book jobs. For sure, you need a team. But it's not about waiting to be discovered. It's about just go, going and creating your own destiny. I mean, anybody at any given night in the karaoke bars across America or or on The Voice or whatever, they have tons of talent. Anyone could do it talent-wise. Right. It's just who's going to put the rubber to the road and, like, actually go sell themselves. And oh, just, okay. After it's so hard, how, you fall down, you stand back up, and you just do it again. How did you do that when you were in junior high? Come on. Well, I mean, and when I was in junior – I wasn't making my – what does it mean to living in junior high? Yes, I made, I made money, but it's not like I, not like now where I have to support three children and a mortgage and like. Well, agreed, <laughs> but I, was an, but I, was an I actor. agreed. But most people, you know, at least from my generation, when they were in junior high, were you know delivering a paper or, you know, waiting tables or something. I, I, they weren't like you know making being money in entertainment. And being a, being a, a model, yeah. I just did. I just did it differently. I loved, um, I didn't get paid for the community theater, but I got paid as an, as an on-camera talent. You know, there's, there's talent agencies everywhere um, yeah. that take any age person. And if you have a, see my mom though, that's the key. She had the time and the, to, and she was so kind and so um, generous and so giving with her time. She was lucky too. She didn't have to have a job. My dad made the money. That's not my case. I have to work yeah. all the time. But like she was able to like take us to these auditions and take us places. I mean, she's an, she's still, she was just in a movie with uh, Nicole Kidman. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's like, a, she's in the, in the industry too. Uh, that I guess helps. we come from a we come from a family of of creators. My dad was an actor in college. He majored in theater. I have a creative family, but um, but yeah, I'm the the main one in my family who is like continuing to still. I'm in a, I'm in my forties. I'm forty three. Still, just made my living as a performer. But I'm not trying to get famous. I'm just trying to get fed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just well, working. It's a job, you know. But it's a fun job that well, you can. Right. So, really how enjoy. did you? At what point did you know though that you wanted this to be your career. I mean, lots of people, you know, maybe, uh, you know, one of my, one of my clients has a band that he plays with on weekends and right. they play, play gigs at local bars. And I guess they get a little bit, but you know, it's not really, that's, that, that, it, that's not what they do. So mm -hmm. how did you know that this is what you wanted to do and that you, you were going to do this? Well, it's what I'm good at. It's what I know. I'm not that awesome at other things. I'm a terrible receptionist. I'm not very organized. I, I worked at a pet store. I got fired. I'm not I'm not that great at other things. <laughs> so I mean, go with what you know. <laughs> I like being in charge of it myself. I like being my own boss. I like making my own schedule. When you say make your own schedule as an entrepreneur, it means 24 seven, let's be real. But you know, I like being in control of it. Um, I like that there's limitless creation. I like that I can do anything and as uh, I, I just love I love creating I'm a, I'm a writer too I, I, I have content you know I, I'm always doing something new and different within the same brand so to answer your question why is the guy who plays with his band on the weekends um, not doing it full-time and I can do it full-time well I when I was just out of college I I was also playing in bands on the weekends but I it was my job so I played you know four or five six nights a week at different restaurants, different places. I was always playing out, always, you know, making money. If you play in a solo or a duo, you get more money than if you're in a band. It's just 
duh. And yeah. I, I grew up in a, t in a town that was really um, supportive of live music in, in, in the Texas Hill Country. This is like the Hill Country, Austin. I mean, Austin is so supportive of live music. It's the live music capital of the world. You get off the airplane in the airport, there's like three stages where bands are being play played to pay. It's oh, uh, I mean, wow. paid to play. It's very supportive of live music in Austin. So I was lucky to grow up in that town, in that area. I went to school in San Marcos. Um, they have this place, Cheatham Street Warehouse, which is just an amazing, amazing um, singer, songwriter kind of haven. And they have Green Hall in New Braunfels. They have a lot of real focus and reverence for the singer, songwriter. Um, it's very respected. It's very revered. And there's lots of that. So I feel like part of me was a product of my, um, you know, where I grew up. But the reason I was I'm able to do it full time is because I don't do three or four hours in a bar on the weekend. I do 30 minutes in the morning. I changed who my audience was. I don't play for people in bars. I play for preschoolers. When I first had my first child, she was like almost a year old and I took her to uh, like a mommy and me music class thing at like a Chicago play space. Oh yeah, I took my daughter to one of those, yeah. Right, right, everyone does that when they're alone and they have their first kid and they're scared and they don't know what to do and they're like, what, my life is in shambles. So I saw this guy <laughs> playing the ukulele and all the kids were just so into it and all the moms were having such a good time and like it was such a great community, it was such a great feeling, it was like such a wonderful thing. I'm like, this is so great. And after the show, I was like, do you get paid for this? He's like, yeah, this is my full-time job. I'm like, oh. I just found my new full-time job. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to sing for kids. So I did have some experience working with children um, in like, you know, theater, youth youth theater. We know as, as a high schooler, we toured to like the elementary school. So I, I have some some experience performing for children. But it really wasn't until I had my first child that I really was like, okay, I need to do this. I need a job where I can take my kid. I thought I could take my kid. Yeah. <laughs> 10 years later, you're not, not taking your kid to your gigs anymore. But luckily, I grew the business to the point where I don't need to anymore. I can afford my husband to stay home or hire childcare if he's playing in my band that day or whatever. But at first, it was kind of like, what can I do that I can bring my child to? Motherhood thrust me into this career. Really. Also, wow. Also voiceover. Well, what what were my... you doing? What were you doing before that, though? You were... I was, yeah, I was working in a studio. Um making voiceover demos for voice talent in the fine arts uh -huh. building downtown for with sound advice a really great company making voiceover demos um but i didn't want like that schedule anymore having a baby um you know it's like it's pretty demanding i was a studio manager had to like i was responsible for selling the demos it was kind of like stressful so i didn't want to do that anymore but I didn't know what to do, really. I was, I got to a point where I was really desperate for money. I was like scared. Like, what do I do for money? What do I do for money? What do I do for money? Um, I even got to the point where I was like, because when you have a baby, as you know, you can't just be away from that baby without no. paying somebody else a lot of money to be with the baby. Right. So you're you're just like, it's like a ball and chain. Sorry, I didn't right. realize and, that before and I got even, pregnant, but I'm like, what do I do paying now? somebody, there's still things that you as a mother get or the father but you oftentimes the mother get called upon to do uh, they're yeah. in child care and they're sick it's and they terrifying. gotta go to the hospital or they gotta go home and you gotta take care of them and it's a huge you know, handicap. And then I mean, you got to tell yeah. your employer, hey, sorry, got to go. And they you say, know? sorry, you're fired. You're not reliable. Right. It's really hard for working. It's really, really, really hard for women who have babies or pay people who have young children who are caregivers to be reliable to an employer. So it, yeah. I didn't feel like I had any options. So yeah. that's when I went to that. Um, this is funny. So I was like so desperate. I was like telling my husband, maybe I can go. There's this new grocery store opening up called Mariano's. Maybe I'll go stock shelves <laughs> at this Mariano's overnight and then you can watch in the day daytime. Anyway, it's funny because fast forward, I Mariano's got me my start as Miss Jamie. Because what? I, yeah, listen to this. This is crazy. So after I met that that musician. I was like, this is my thing. So I start researching like who's doing it. I'm like, oh, Little Miss Anne's doing this. Super Stoli's doing this. So, uh, so Laura Doherty's doing this. I'm like, just researching. It's like, you just have to figure out what's going on. So I'm like, well, can I have you for coffee? Can you tell me? Uh, can we talk? And my friend, this girl, Super Stoli, she's so sweet. She's like my mentor. She's like, yeah, let's go for coffee. I'm like, what do you do? Who do you sell this to? Who's your audience? How how does this work? And she's like, oh yeah, libraries, park district. She's like laying it out for me. She's so cool. She's still my one of my great friends. One of the people who's like, I need an Eric. Um, she, huh? 
She's but so she wasn't forthcoming. worried about competition, huh? But here's the thing. When you're singing for kids and you're like an early childhood person, like you're kind, you share. There's enough. I don't know. I don't think she was worried about competition. You know what? When somebody does great in your industry, it sets a great example for that industry. And then you'll get more gigs. 100%. Right. If everyone's right. like, oh, man, Mr. Singer at the zoo, let's hire someone who sings. Oh, man, Mr. Dave's so awesome. Cool. Let's let's hire a performer. So kind of it's like you want everyone to do well. That being said, you want to make sure people aren't undercharging. Um, right. When they first enter. So like there's a new person I'm calling like you have to charge this much. <laughs> it's like a union. Like don't undercharge. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I take people under my wing now that I've been doing it for 10 years. But anyway, so here, so I went and I, I decided to do this thing. I'm like, I'm going to have a shtick. I'm going to have a thing. I'm going to be Miss Jamie from the farm. It's like a miss. It's like a teacher kind of vibe. And like I'm from the farm because I did grow up on a 600 acre goat and cattle ranch in Texas. And I'm going to teach about healthy eating and like organic farming. And it was around the same time where um, my little baby was watching Barney um, down on the farm. Oh, yeah. And she was so, so obsessed. I'm like, okay, farm. This is great. Like every little two-year-old can say moo. Like this is the thing. This is the thing. <laughs> so I adapted this persona and I'm like, I wrote a whole album. I mean, I really just got serious about it. I didn't have anything else going on. I was like really needing to find something to do. So I went to Mariano's and I was like, hi, I'm um, a local performer and I'm going to be performing in this nearby farmer's market soon. Can I put this um, flyer on your... Um, community board to like advertise it and also there's this play cafe kookaburra it's not there anymore but i'm playing at this play cafe really supportive owners they're so kind anyway she, this guy's like no we don't have a community bulletin board you can't put that here and i was like okay and it was my first time in the store and i saw there was a piano i'm like piano in here you guys have like people come and perform in here this they, is a cool they, mine store. used to they don't I know well Kroger bought it it's a whole thing I can tell you everything about it. <laughs> ah. But before Kroger bought it, it was so cool. And so they, they had this like Tales for Tots on the calendar. I said, oh, my gosh, you do stuff for kids? I'm like, I, I do stuff for kids. I want to I wanna perform here. And the guy's like, look, I have nothing to do with that. You're going to have to ask like the girl in like corporate. I'm like, great. What's her name? And he's like, uh, Emily. And I'm like, can I have her email? I'm just like... <laughs> I'm like looking at his his name tag. I'm like, Pete, can I tell Emily that like Pete and I think it's a great idea for me to like do my show? And he's like rolling his eyes at me. He's like, whatever. <laughs> so I email Emily. I'm like, Emily, me and Pete think it would be so great if Miss Jamie from the farm came and sing about the grocery store. And this girl, Emily, also helped me get my start. Hi, Emily Williamson. You're the best. Um, She's like, OK, let's try it. I don't know. What do you need? How much does it cost? I'm like, I have no idea. Right. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Um, but meanwhile, I had my friend who's a graphic artist make me like a logo and like a awesome branding. It's all about like fake it till you make it. Like, let's be real. The beginning was just about like, can someone please take a picture of me performing and make it look like I'm a big deal so I can seem like I'm a big deal so then people can hire me? And like now, eventually you're a big deal. But it all starts with like an you're sure it's an act. Come on. You have to kind of show show that you can before you really can. Right. So um, that's a good lesson. Don't don't wait to make it just fake it till you make it but you know make sure you can really back yourself up so anyway well, I, I think that, that i don't think that's <laughs> limited to uh performance no i agree uh, entrepreneurs anything. either i think that's true of, of a lot of entrepreneurs have confidence in yourself or no one will have confidence in you absolutely right so i'm gonna find my... those first customers <laughs> exactly and, you know you, they are jumping into the abyss with you and if you don't show them that you are absolutely committed they're gonna jump <laughs> it's true it's really true you have to be confident so i did like a little audition with you know and i and i made sure that during the audition during this performance i mean, i'm literally singing to in a grocery store in the cafe it's kind of unusual um but you know whatever why not i mean not people, i'm sure people <laughs> i'm sure people gathered around i mean as soon as you hear something like that I mean, it's, you know, it's like street musicians playing, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's cool. What's that? Exactly. But I made sure that it was well attended. I like was told my father-in-law to come. I told every friend with a kid, I'm like, you got to be here at this show. You got to be here. You got to make me look good. Come on, just really be into it. So yeah, it was, it was a success. And she's like, yeah, great. Okay, fine. So start next month and do all 13 stores. And I'm like, wait, what? So I was doing a show at every one of their stores. But guess what? You know, Mariano's when they started out, there were 13 stores, but then they were like, 45 so i kept getting a raise and getting promoted and getting more gigs every single month they were opening like tons and tons of these stores i'm so lucky i re i like rode that hitched my wagon to that star you know so then i'm like getting more gigs so then this is like a full-time job like i was doing 
33, 35 shows a month. I'm just driving around. I'm like, oh my gosh, like we got to get another car. Like, And you can make a living doing that? I mean, I did. <laughs> wow. Good for you. Well, I mean, now I, I, now I have a talent agent. I mean, I charge like, I mean, not, not doing Marianas anymore, but yeah, if you're charging like $500 a show. And you do like oh, wow. Years, it's not that, not that bad. I think there's another lesson. Performance artists in general, most of them have been beat down so many times because you're going to hear a lot of no's, a lot more than yeses throughout the course of your career, especially early on. Probably would have thought, oh, you know, like what, maybe $7,500 or something and plus some gas money. Five hundred. Oh, wow. yeah. That's where the luxury of uh, that's where it's really pays to like talk to the people who are doing it. And when yeah. he said he did it for a living, I knew he could charge money. So yeah. when I talked to my friend Super Stoli, she's like, yeah, I mean, libraries would probably pay this amount. You know, park districts would probably pay this amount. Birthday parties would probably pay this amount. I mean, she already knew. You know, you oh, have to wow. go to your mentors. Go to someone who's already doing it and find out. Yeah. Well, so. and don't necessarily take no for an answer because I've pitched a couple of things along the way to libraries and they're like, well, we don't have a budget for that. And you're like, oh, okay, well. We well, have All to right. find out what they want. You have to really find out what's needed and wanted and then produce that. You know, you can't, I mean, I'm not saying you, your program wasn't good, but find out what they do have a budget for, you know, I mean, schools. Right. I mean, so like, okay, so think about daycares. Daycares have like a field trip in the summertime that they take the older kids on, but the little kids don't go on field trips. So they have indoor field trips. Right. So I know now all the daycare chains, uh -huh. you know, so you could, I mean, you could literally just do daycares and be like a full-time performer. Right. In the you know? Right. You have to find the right price. They can't, they can't afford $500, all of them, but you know, you, maybe you do, you know, two in a row for 400 or one for 350 or whatever. I mean, you, you have to find your way, but I needed to find a way that would pay because I'm supporting my whole family. And as long as it's, it's, it's worth it, you give a great product and it fits within a budget they can afford, charge that, you know, don't charge less. Right. And what's it worth to you? You have to drive, you have to set up. I mean, come on. It's not, it's not like so easy. Right. It's work. It is but work. It's it fun. Is. And it's something I came up with in myself and I enjoy. And no one's telling me I have to change it, you know? And if right. a birthday party mom's like, can you be a princess? I'm like, I could, but I'm not going to. I'm Miss Jamie <laughs> from the farm. I'm just doing the farm. <laughs> it's my brand. You have to have a brand. There's a lot well, of Well, and in therein a, in a is brand. a lesson, I think, that's applicable to all kinds of entrepreneurs. What you say no to is often as important as what you say yes to. There is such a temptation when you're starting out, when you're desperate for money. It is so tempting when somebody says, will you do X? Can you do X? Well, of course, yeah, of course I can do that. But do you I know, want to? But um, <laughs> it's, it's really, it's hard to build a business around just, you know, all the different things you could potentially do right yeah you got to make those mistakes and then figure out what you want to do again i know my husband is the same way <laughs> he would agree with you because like things were getting really bleak during covid when all the live shows were canceled and oh, I bet. all my contracts were poof and i was trying to get him to do all kinds of stuff i'm like oh you you're good at he's good at everything i'm like you could be a photographer here do this do that do this like you should be a and my friend was like oh he can photograph uh, my cheerleading little girls and eric's like i'm not going to be like a cheerleading photographer like this is too <laughs> off base for me he's like i'm just going to go get a job at amazon and he started like loading boxes in the middle of the night he's like screw this i'm not doing that like i have my like too far and that's too far <laughs> yeah that's important to know yeah it really it is, is. Jamie, you know, we've been talking about how you got started with your children's entertainment business. I know you also do a lot of voiceover work. Talk about how you got started with that. Yeah, I can credit my husband for that, too. Gosh, he's just getting all the credit. He's going to be so thrilled when he hears this. <laughs> I've been an actor, you know, since I was a kid. did a lot of theater, did a lot of um, some on-camera acting, but... I didn't do much voiceover. I did one voiceover job back when I was like 20 years old and I was living in Austin. It was a, for a, a Japanese animated cartoon and I didn't really know about voiceover. I thought that, oh, that's, that's strange. But when I was, my husband and I met, he was trying to convince me to move to Chicago. And I was like, oh, why, why am I going to move to Chicago? And he's like, well, Chicago right. has a huge Austin's the, voice. Austin is the music capital of the world, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. I'm like, why am I moving to Chicago? He's like, 
because voiceover. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, no, listen, there's a bunch of ad agencies here. And they hire often back in the day before everything was so like online, they hire local voice talent. And like, there's a lot of money to be made in voiceover. And I'm like, really? So he um, had a friend of what he worked with, Kate McClanahan with Sound Advice, the place that made the voiceover demos that I, I eventually started working for. Um, he's like, yeah, I mean, he was working with her for years and years with her studio. He met a lot of voice actors coming through, making their demos, hearing about how much money they made and just like, wow, this is cool. So like any actor let, can, let me can stop you for just a second, because I'm not sure I know what a voiceover demo is. You know how an actor has a headshot? So in voiceover, you don't need a headshot because they can't see you, but they need to be able to hear what you sound like. So a voiceover right. demo is just literally a demonstration of what you can do. So okay. if you go to jamieblythevo.com, you can hear my voiceover demos. But it's like a sampling of how you could sound on different commercials or different narration reads or different whatever. Okay, it's, but it just so shows, you do one of those piece. for you and piece. then you're done, right? Well, you do the demo and you send it to agents and your agents represent you. Okay. And they send you out on, um, you know, they, they send you auditions that you can then get in front of like oh, I the see. world's best, um, <laughs> biggest commercials or whatever. You, oh. that's, you need a talent agent, you know, in any, in any industry in the arts, you need a talent agent. You need a team. You need a manager. You need someone to, to work for you so you can be the talent. Even, even in you. voiceover today? Yeah, you should. I mean, you can do some on your own, but if uh, all the ones that I've made the huge bucks have been through my talent agents. Well, I, you know, I'll I'll just tell you a funny story, and you'll probably uh, laugh because you've heard this one before. But um, when I first started uh, looking into voiceover work, I I was told, oh, you know, those audio books on Amazon is a great way to get started, and. I looked at those and I did some of the auditions. It was like, first of all, there's a lot of really, really weird stuff out there. <laughs> I'm talking insanely weird. Okay. You would not believe until you go poking around yourself. And then <laughs> that the, what people were planning to pay, a lot of them were only like paying royalties. Mm -mm. And I'm like, but this is a really weird book. It's a, who would buy this book? Like, the, you know, and well, if they, they don't even buy it, you, so how am no I ever going to get any royalties? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I know. I agree. But I don't ever do audiobooks. I do things that take that air for like 15 or 30 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do audiobooks. I mean, there can be good money in audiobooks. Some people are really interested in audiobooks. I don't. I don't choose to do that. It takes too long. I have three small children and a whole other job. <laughs> but um, there, you can be an audiobook um, voiceover. But I don't feel like it's really worth the the time for me. Well, I will just say, based on my limited perusal of that corner of the market, that um, there are. There are probably some very nice needles in the haystacks, but um, <laughs> there's there's a lot of ways that you can spend a lot of time coming up with demo auditions and reading sample parts of it and um, only to find even if you get the job, it's like, and you're going to pay me what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, you have to be going after things that would be worth your time. I wouldn't right. do that. But um, when you're doing when you're voicing a commercial campaign that's airing worldwide and you get paid residuals every time it plays and it, i mean you have to go after the good stuff well the people right. who are the gatekeepers to the really good stuff are talent agents top yeah. talent agents so you need to have a great demo and um you need to be able to um get the talent agent's attention and want to and and you have to you don't know if they have room for you on their roster. Their talent right. roster might have three ladies who just sound exactly like you. They don't want you to compete with them. So right. it might not be a good time for that agent. And these days you can get work um, on your own more and more, but it's like anything. If you're going to like try to like go after cheap stuff, it's trouble. It's going to if cheap clients are trouble clients, just go only only go for the good stuff is really worth your time for anything in your business. Charge what you're worth and don't take less, because if you're taking less, you're going to get into a lot of trouble. But what about the counter argument that I've heard any number of times, which is, well, you've got to start somewhere. And even if you're just doing it for free or just doing a little of this and a little of that, you got to you got to start somewhere and have some 
credibility that you've done some of this before. Is, I, you don't I believe can, that? I not for voiceover. I no. mean, I can see for my like my Miss Jamie stuff when I was like, can I just please play your farmers market for free to get pictures? Like I did that like the first week I started because like I literally was just starting. Well, okay, well, I didn't know farmers markets usually can't afford you anyway, so that's not the right people to be looking at. You need to be looking at preschools, libraries, park districts, you know, there's other places that have the money. It's kind of like yeah, got, y got my YMCA money, right? <laughs> camps or right, life exactly. fitness I do the camps, GCC. Exactly. like that. They're, exactly. They have money. They're looking for entertainment. I mean, yep. both of these things I do are very niche. Like there's only a small amount of people who would really enjoy this or want this. So you have to just find those people and there's plenty of it. So you can work forever. You just have to, it's not for everyone, you know, it's just for those people, but who is, who's looking for that? And that's, I love that. I love having a really small thing because it's it keeps me focused. But but for voiceover, it doesn't matter if you're beginner or advanced or have lots of experience. The gig is worth what the gig is worth. So if you do a gig that's worth twenty five thousand dollars for twenty five dollars, you're not helping anybody. It's not like right. they're gonna come back to you and then pay you more later. <laughs> it's like <laughs> and, and just and go, oh, you're a schmuck. Because, exactly, <laughs> you drive down the rates, and that's how you're, you know, you're a schmuck. You'll do it for nothing. Well, it, she did it before. Let's see if she'll do it again. And a lot of it's just you don't know it's it's innocent they just don't know what it's worth so you have to find out that's where you need to do some homework if i hadn't met with that my friend super stoli and asked her how much should i charge i wouldn't know i would that, that was a lot i didn't know i could charge that much but that's how much you should charge because that's how much it goes for you know um, jamie one of the know? things i love about the, my conversation with you today is the number of points that you've made you know people probably think being an entrepreneur is some uh, or it being an entertainment entrepreneur is something like really wildly different. And yet all the stuff you've nope. talked about, find your niche, stick with your niche. Don't be chasing too many bright, shiny objects. The clients you say no to are as important as the ones you say yes to. Do your market research. I mean, find your tribe. I mean, it, it's just like it, every point you're making is exactly ones that apply to almost every kind of business. Of course. The only difference is my product is me. But right. really, that's all. It's the same. All the same rules apply. You have to do your marketing. You have to keep track of your stats. You have to do your taxes right. You have to you have to know all these things. It's a business. Yeah. It's, it's a business. And that's the difference between an artist who's like, oh, I'm just going to play in my living room the songs that I want, and I'm a bleeding heart artist. It's like, okay, well, that's fine. You can do that. But if you want to make money at it, you have to find out what people want to pay for. Right. And I have to find out where that is. Right. You know, and you have to keep creating. I'm I'm so I love residual income and passive income. That's my goal. So I have um, rec some recorded media and I've had over a million streams and that adds up every wow. couple of weeks. I get a big check. I mean, you got to keep creating. And also with my voiceover stuff that that sometimes pays over the years. Like, oh, they renewed that the Flintstones vitamins using you for another year. Here's this amount of money. It's like, yes. So you have to always be thinking in the future, not just the immediate jobs, but like, how can you get passive income? Because there's only so many hours in a day. And when I was right. doing the 500 shows a year, I had three small kids. That was too many hours, Doris. That was too much. And it really really hurt my quality of life and now i'm so glad i mean covid knock on wood i shouldn't say this but like it was it was really good for me because it made me slow down and it it i lost mariano's in that i don't have them as a client anymore and i was so scared to lose them because they were my sure thing but i'm so glad that i did because now i do so much more voiceover yeah and, and that's I've, i can spend more time at home with my family it's so much less time for me i don't have to drive anywhere i can just do it from my home studio so when when you lose something big just keep in mind that it's making way for something bigger yeah always think to the future and don't get too complacent because everything will always change nothing yeah you have to be able to adapt with the times a lot of yeah. my voice talent colleagues or um you know people in my industry they didn't have a home studio during COVID because you can do your auditions from home or you go to your agent. But when you book the job, you go downtown to a studio. Well, I'm so lucky that my husband's a recording engineer. We did have a home studio. So right. I was able to do, I lost hundreds of, I lost so much work for Miss Jamie, but I made it all up 
with voiceover. I didn't lose any money in 2020, even though I lost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. That's I lost so amazing. much work, but I didn't lose any any money because I could switch real quick. Also, we went online. We're very adaptable. We made all our shows virtual. We got a green screen. Our illustrator, Kara Dunning, I love you, Kara. She made so many um, more illustrations for us, for our, our programs. We had like a new program every week. I made so much more content. You have to change with the times and be really highly adaptable. Again, thank goodness I had Eric. I can't do all that stuff for myself. I don't know that technical stuff, but I'm the creator. I create it and come up with it. He just puts it into the real world. Um, so I was able how, to change change it up. Yeah. How phenomenal to have a business partner that is such a great um, complement to your skill sets. That's phenomenal. And you have to have a lot. Of, thank you. It is true, but you have to have a lot of confidence in yourself because, I mean, sometimes it's really scary waking up in the morning and be like, where's my next gig? I have to have the confidence that will keep coming in even though it's not there yet. You know what right. I mean? It's, it's a little right. like, okay, well, I don't have a guarantee. My only guarantee is what I created yesterday for today. So, so, I have to create so, tomorrow. so Jamie, what's, what's been your favorite part about having your own entertainment business? The challenge, I guess. I really do rise to a challenge. I'm always my, I, I get stressed out easy, but I'm really my best when, when it's kind of a little scary. I, I like rising to a challenge and not knowing what's going to happen, but then coming out on top and even on top of your top than I was before. I like seeing that I can I can make it go right and I can make it happen. It takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of forward motion. But I, I like seeing that I, I can do that. I like the challenge. challenge. I'll bet that little rush of adrenaline started pretty young when you were going on stage because that's exactly the feeling. It's like they push you out there and you got to go do it. And I think you develop through theater, you develop a, a sense of confidence and a belief that even if it gets all screwed up, somehow it'll work out okay. I think uh, you're right. I mean, my early days in theater were very formative for how I am now. And you'd have to remember, I was, I was little orphan Annie. I had to carry the whole cast. I was in every single scene. I had, I had all my lines memorized before my first rehearsal, though. I'm just very like... I'm kind of obsessed. I'm not a chill person. So like I, I just would get into something and I would just get all the way into it and become my life. I'd just be obsessed about that. But the more you do, the you know, the more it pays off in, in the end. You know, I'm still, it's like a snowball effect. All the hard work at the beginning pays off later. Don't, don't rest on your laurels and expect anybody to do it for you. You know, no. who's going to make it happen? The person in the mirror. That's right. For you, what's been the hardest part? about having also your the own insecurity sometimes i'm broke and it's scary you know it's... you mean it's not all sunshine and rainbows <laughs> and unicorns no sometimes the rainbows aren't there and the unicorns are sick it's very hard it's sometimes very terrifying and i'm like what am i even doing so the doldrums can be very stressful for me um and having now over 10 years of track with this particular business, you know, business where I do these two things, the Miss Jamie and the voiceover. Having the experience helps me a little bit, but I still get nervous in the slow times. I still forget that just because it's so quiet in February um, doesn't mean it's not going to be amazing in the summer. My business is pretty seasonal. Um, but just having faith through the the hard parts that it's gonna it's gonna come back around and i think covid really shook that for a lot of us too you know because we thought it was over and then it wasn't over and then it uh -huh. came back in waves and things got canceled and this and that i mean that's harder for a perform for a performer all a lot of kinds of performance types of and everybody related to it right everything from the ushers to the sound people it was devastating. It was devastating. I'm really lucky that I got to take some of it online, although it didn't pay as well. Um, and people didn't want it after a while. I mean, we're all Zoomed out. We know nobody wants to watch the Zoom stuff. <laughs> but, um, yes, yeah. yes, we are. That is true. That is as true. We sit, as we said on a Zoom call together, Doris. Yeah, I was just thinking <laughs> that. Jamie, as a creative person, I'm sure you're always thinking about what might be next? What are some things that you've thought about doing for the future and where your business might go in the future? That's a good question. Um, I do like thinking about the future. I want to do more recorded music out there. I only have recorded, even though I've recorded albums as Jamie Blythe, you can go listen on iTunes or everywhere for Jamie Blythe. I have an album called A Collection. Uh -huh. I have only done one album as Miss Jamie, even though I've written so much and I've done it for so long. I only have one album. It's called Miss Jamie's Farm. And it was released in 2013. So 
I really want to do more. Wow, albums. that's a long time ago. It's so long ago. It's so long ago. I just I wrote it. I re we recorded it in like two weeks, and then we just have been performing like ever since. So, so what's on the what's on the album? What kind of uh, song? Oh, on Miss Jamie's Farm. Oh, yeah. My music. Happy chickens lay yummy eggs. Keeping it pesticide free. Um, you know, all, Love it. all the hits. Yeah, super. You can ask Siri or Alexa or whoever's listening into your household to play it. But um. I have another album written called Garden Friends, and I and I want to do another album called you know Miss Jamie's Green Planet, and I I have, um, you know I want to do Miss Jamie's Little Schoolhouse. I want to write and record more. I have so many things I've written that I haven't gotten out there, and I really want to get these things out there, um, not just because it's fun to create them, but you know most of my million streams came from one song on that album. You're kidding. So I mean, the more songs you have the better. So I need to get some more songs out there. It's fun. I love to, I'm a musician first and foremost. I'm a singer. That's my background. I was a classically trained. I did choir and choral competitions, all state choir, traveled with choir. I'm a singer. That's my main thing. So I'd love to record more albums. Um, and I'd also like to get back eventually um, to performing non-children music. Sometimes my husband and I do shows together where it's just us and we sing like, you know, um, we, we perform other songs. So he, he plays everything. He does bass. He does guitar. He does mandolin. He does anything. He's just wow. like a jack of all trades. I'm telling you, wow, this, wow. Guy is, this guy is good to have in your back pocket. So um, I'd like to do more grown up music, music for grown ups again, coming back to my roots when I, you know, when I was in my 20s in the Austin area doing that. I'd like to do that again. I don't want to do it to tour and try to make a lot of money with that and, and try to do that as, as like a money maker like I do with Miss Jamie. I don't, that's not the same because but you're James talking about program. maybe like appearing in some local venues yeah i have but i think i would like to do that more because it brings me a lot of joy so i'd like to be so comfortable i'd like to have so much time i don't i don't i don't i'm not comfortable and i don't have time but i would love to be <laughs> to the point where i could just like i'm like yeah we're fine everything's going great with voiceovers um let's just go do a show like and just for fun so i'd like to have more fun with with my music and write again for myself rather than um and it is fun with miss jamie don't get me wrong I, I really enjoy every single show but um i'd like to do it for fun not for money do you know what i mean yeah well i mean obviously recording albums when you talk about trying to get to residual income um that's kind of the equivalent of productizing what what people talk about uh, productizing your service business, but but um, you know recording albums. If you're looking for residual income, finding that one hit, uh, and obviously the more good work you have out there, the more likely you're going to have another hit. And I'm sure with that comes some of that residual income that would be very freeing to allow you to do you know engage in some other creative uh yeah, music you know satisfy some of the other creative itches yeah, you have you're totally right the music and, and how artists are compensated for music sure has changed a lot quickly you know when i first started this i was actually selling physical cds i've sold thousands and thousands of these cds but no one's buying cds no <laughs> No. You know, like, oh, well, the kids are like, what's that? Right. They, used to say, they used to say a DVD. Now they don't even say that. So it's no, like. Now you just need a TikTok <laughs> thingy with ads or something or YouTube. I mean, yeah. So you have to keep ahead of the um, the technology um, to, to be able to monetize it. But regardless, I even if it wasn't paying that much, I'd like to still write and, and release because I love recording. I'm a, a recording artist. I loved I loved the the process of it. I love everything about it. So I'd like to do more of that for my future. I, I used to think, oh, I'll be like a YouTube star for Miss Jamie or I just I don't know. It's really hard for me to get excited about that. You don't want to be an influencer for 20 somethings? <laughs> 20, for 20 something months olds. <laughs> my target market's four years old, Doris. <laughs> yeah. I know there's funny. there's Miss Rachel. There's people blowing up that are like awesome on this. I just don't know if I want to be that public. That's my problem. I really like the anonymity, if that's the right way to say it, of my voiceover that people don't even know that it's me. I change my voice for my jobs. Well, I'm sure it is kind of freeing. Because... I like that. And Miss Jamie, they don't even recognize me when I'm not in costume. I mean, I have a, wear a lot of makeup. I wear, I wear a farmer's hat. I have little ponytails piggy tails and I'm just like super like bright and happy and like my normal personas just I barely wear makeup and I'm just like I like that kind of so I don't know if I want to be super famous I, yeah. I I like the idea that with attention comes um 
financial security. I do like to be financially secure, but I kind of like I kind of like how it is now. It's just kind of at my own pace and at my own discretion, and I do enjoy that. So yeah, with fame comes some other things that are oh, often gosh. not very pleasant. So looking back over your career, what advice would you offer to budding entertainers or artists? I, what did you call that? An entrepreneur? An arch, entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs an entrepreneur. that are out there. What advice would you offer them? Yeah, I want to write a book that's like behind the scenes of an entrepreneur, six strings to six figures, like how I took my love of music and made it. It sounds like residual <laughs> income waiting to happen, Jamie. <laughs> I should. I should write a book. It'd be fun. I would just say don't give up, but treat it like a business. Be smart. Be business minded. If you want to do it for a living, if you want to do it for fun, have fun. If you want to do it for a living, apply all the normal rules of business to your art and then then you can do it for a living. And it, it might not it might not happen. But um, if you're going to try, give it give it a real try. And that means have a plan. Don't just think you're going to karaoke your way into <laughs> well, and I, a mortgage I think payment. You... I think you said something earlier about you attributed persistence to some of your success. Extremely. You cannot give up too soon. You don't know how close you were to your first big break. You know, you can't give up too soon. Don't. And I didn't have a plan B. I got to tell you, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but <laughs> there was no other option for me, Doris. It wasn't like I was just waiting for it with this other career in the wings. I, I wasn't. This is all I this is. I gave it 110 percent. I don't. What do you mean? There was no plan B. B I, mean, I didn't have another job. It wasn't like I was a teacher and I was like, I have this nice job, but maybe I want to go do this. It's like, well, okay. you could have done something. I mean, I don't know, think so. my niece, I don't feel psychology that. major, who obviously can't get a psychology job with a bachelor's degree in psychology. I know. I was a speech comm. So major, she sells I cars. I mean, you know, there's always plan B for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of what I was getting to, which is that the notion of that would just be probably too crushing. I just, I'm just, like I said, I'm not that great at other stuff. I could do this. I could, I know I can do this. I did it. I did it before. That was the confidence I had. I did it before when I was younger. I was a singer songwriter and I bought my house and made my living doing that. So I knew I could do it again. It's just a different format. And I'm very lucky that this one paid, paid better and, and was less for less time put in. So it's a good deal. You know, there's some like luck too. I'm, I'm fortunate. Also, I would also say some serious talent and some and some some guts because yeah. yeah, who's going to say I'm going to do this for my main job? I mean, come on. But I am. <laughs> I'm making it happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Hats off to you. You have my admiration because I have just some glimmering of how challenging that is. And and a lot of friends who have a lot of talent who just don't have the Self belief or the talent is 10%. Power or whatever. Talent they got the 10%. talent, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Just you don't have to be that talented, but if you're that tenacious, it doesn't matter right. if you're not that talented. If, you, if right. you decided to do it and you're like, this is it, this is what I'm going to do, people right. will believe you're talented whether you're talented or not because you said so. It's just like a confidence thing. I yeah. don't have a lot of luxury of self inspection and self reflection. I'm, I don't try to spend too much time introverting on is it good, is it not good. It doesn't matter. It just just do it. <laughs> just do it a lot. And then absolutely you, you'll find your way. Just do a lot of it. It's more important to outflow than inflow. It's more important to extrovert than introvert. So one stable <laughs> thing I always told myself is if I'm not working, I'm networking. If there's a day I don't have a job, I go and I meet people. Like if there's yeah. a street festival going on, I would like dress up as Miss Jamie and go. You have to promote your business where people are, which is why I was so lucky with Mariana's. It's like that was a business that was already expanding. Yeah. But like I do festivals and stuff. So don't sit at home and think you're going to find your way that way. Go out and meet people and see who's doing what. And don't be afraid right. to ask for help and make new friends. And yeah. do things like this, like we're doing today. Make, make yeah. new friends. The more you socialize, the, the more you can, you can do stuff. Great advice. Last quick question, Jamie. If people are interested in trying to reach you or learn more about your business or maybe even hire you, what's the best way for them to reach you? I guess through the contact forms on my websites, miss-jamie.com, J-A-M-I-E, and Jamie Blythe, B-L-Y-T-H-E-V-O.com. And I think there's one on my main website too, blythemartinproductions.com. So yeah, there's contacts you can fill out there and I'll get back to you real quick. Um, or on social media, you know, find me, be my friend on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, at Miss Jamie's Farm, at Jamie Blythe VO. And I'd love, I'd love to help. 
Thank you, Jamie, for being on the show this week. Folks, do check out her websites and maybe take a listen to some of her music. Yeah. Ask Siri to play Miss Jamie's Farm. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you again, Jamie. You made my day. (laughs) And thanks to my listeners. I appreciate you. You're the reason I do this. Check out my website, www.thesavvyentrepreneur.org. There's a library there of past episodes of the show with phenomenal other entrepreneurs just like Jamie and uh, blogs, tools, podcasts, uh, all sorts of free resources. Be sure to join me again next Saturday at 11 a.m. But until then, I'm Doris Nagel wishing you happy entrepreneuring.